When Ibrahim Traore first took over power through a coup in 2022, the only thing that ECOWAS, the African Union international bloc such as the European Union, the World Bank and IMF, and Burkina Faso's foreign partners including the USA and France were concerned about was when an election will be conducted in the country. Not one of these groups bothered to find out the reason why the coup occurred and how exactly it was different from the previous military coups. The same thing happened in Mali and most recently Niger, with all the groups calling for a return to civilian rule and emphasizing the need for an election. Some of them, such as ECOWAS, even went as far as threatening to intervene militarily unless civilian rule is restored, while others suspended financial aid to pressure the military juntas to restore civilian rule and conduct an election. However, the question is, what is the big deal about conducting an election? Out of all the elections conducted in all the African countries since independence, how many have truly been beneficial to the African people? And why is the West so concerned and putting pressure on the military junta to conduct an election? These are the questions running through the minds of not just elite Africans, but also in the minds of Africans' youngest president, Ibrahim Traore. Since Traore took over power, there has been so much pressure on him to restore civilian rule and conduct a national election. In one interview, the Prime Minister of Burkina Faso made it known that whenever delegates from the regional bloc ECOWAS or the African Union managed to meet with the Burkinabe military government, the only thing on their agenda was when an election would be conducted in the country. Not one of these delegates bothered to discuss the insecurity that has been plaguing the country since 2015, and neither did they offer any help to fight terrorism in the country. This attitude and the pressure from the international community has prompted Ibrahim Traore to make it known through his prime minister, Apollinaire Joachim, that no elections will be conducted in Burkina Faso under the timeline given to them by ECOWAS and the international community. Speaking on behalf of Captain Traor, Prime Minister Apollinaire stated in a press conference that the West or France cannot force them to organize an election. The Prime Minister started by saying that there is a need for frank exchanges and discussion, instead of going in circles which will impede progress. Speaking in a passionate voice, the Prime Minister stated that Burkina Faso is tired of underdevelopment and tired of having the same problems over and over again. The country under the leadership of Ibrahim Traor is eager to move past this stage of underdevelopment, and to do this, there is a need for adaptability. Speaking to the international community, the prime minister stated that, in the interventions, you have to know how to adapt. You can't come and intervene in Burkina Faso with the same schedules and the same criteria as if you are intervening in Mongolia or Chile. You have to keep in mind the concrete conditions in which you are intervening so that your intervention is as effective as possible. This is what we expect and what we want. According to the Prime Minister, the best way for any foreign body or country to help Burkina Faso is by cooperating with the priorities of the military government, which is ensuring security and development in the country. He went further to say that if elections would help to achieve this priority of security and development, then the military government is very much ready to conduct an election as fast as possible. However, he said that if the purpose of holding an election was just for the sake of holding an election, then Burkina Faso would have no part of it. This is because holding an election just for the sake of saying that Burkina Faso is no longer under military rule will not be beneficial to the country. According to the Prime Minister, there needs to be an objective in holding an election because the military government, together with the people of Burkina Faso, are tired of the endless circle of poverty and underdevelopment. Prime Minister Apollinaire went on to say that if elections were a means of development, Burkina Faso would have been developed already, which is very correct. He then stated that this is what differentiates the military government under the leadership of Captain Traor and a Burkina Faso politician who has no objective. The prime minister emphasized that the military is not made up of politicians, but men of mission who came into power for a purpose. Therefore, they cannot just organize elections just for the sake of organizing elections. Echoing the words of Captain Traor, the prime minister declared that the military took over power to bring security back to the country and ensure rapid development in Burkina Faso. 
So if elections would help to achieve this objective, then the military would organize it. But if not, then the elections would be suspended until they are ready. He further added that the international community should learn to adapt to their decision because it's the right of the country as a sovereign state to make whatever decision it feels will benefit the country. Just the same way that Burkina Faso has never told the Americans when it should organize elections or France when it should organize elections, the USA and France or any other foreign country do not have any right to determine when elections should be held in Burkina Faso. The Prime Minister also noted that Captain Traore has made it known that he is leading the country in a path of true sovereignty and independence, so every decision he makes will be in that direction. This is truly a magnificent speech from Captain Traore, and we agree with every word he said. The West is always concerned about when elections will be conducted in African countries, because to them election is synonymous with democracy. Whether or not the election conducted is free and fair doesn't matter as long as the elections are conducted at the end of every term. Whether or not the person who wins is not the choice of the people doesn't also matter. How is that democracy? In the history of African democracy, everybody can agree that democracy in Africa has failed. It can't lead to the development of the continent. Instead, it has turned into a political game where politicians with money can buy their way into the seat of power and loot public funds that should have been used to develop the country. African democracy has also ensured that the same politician who entered into the seat of power can manipulate the constitution to ensure that he continues to rule for as long as he likes, and when he is tired, he can decide to place his child in that position. The West sees all this and still calls it democracy because that politician conducts an election at the end of every term. The truth is, African democracy is a sham and frankly speaking should be ended. Aside from this, the West is concerned about the so-called democracy in Africa because it's the best way for them to continue to have a hold on African resources. With civilian rule, they will be able to manipulate and place politicians that are greedy and ready to work in their interest in power. However, with leaders like Captain Treyor in power, it will be difficult to maintain that influence, hence the continuous call for a return to civilian rule. For there to be a change, African countries need to find a system of government that works for them. The fact that democracy is working for the West doesn't mean that it is the most suitable kind of government for every country. Take a look at China. China doesn't practice democracy, but a system of government which is based on the parameters of a unitary communist state. The United States may despise the country and call it a dictatorship. However, it doesn't change the fact that China has grown to become the biggest rival of the U.S. As Captain Traore stated in one interview, there is no need to continue to imitate something that is not working. The time has come for African countries to decide what is beneficial for them and what is not. Instead of just depending and following after the dictates of the West, so what will it be? Will we we'll continue in the path of democracy or follow our own path? What do you think? Let us know in the comments section below.